All right, good morning, good morning, good morning, everybody. Hey, this is the day that the Lord have made, and I will rejoice and be glad. Any good morning to you. Thank you so much for tuning in to In the Backyard with Pastor Perryman. Hey, as you can see, we are not outside today. The reason that we are not outside is because the wind is blowing very hard, so we had to come inside this morning. So shout out to everyone who's on today. Shout out to our Instagram audience. Shout out to our Facebook Live audience. We thank you so much for tuning in. Hey, shout out to my guy Thomas who's on today. Good to see you. Shout out to Miss Ruth Landaverde. Shout out to Miss Irene Holmes. Shout out to my cousin Robert Perryman. Shout out to Miss Sheila T. Roby. Shout out to my wife, Pastor Sophia, who's on today. Good to see you guys. Thank you so much for tuning in. Do me a favor. Make sure you share, you like, you tag, you invite. Start a watch party today. Get other people to come on and be a part of In the Backyard with Pastor Perryman. Again, we are not outside today because the wind is blowing very hard. So we had to come inside today, all right? Uh, but nevertheless, we're going to get the word this morning. So, hey, y'all do me a favor. Make sure you share, you like, you tag, you invite. Start a watch party today. Get other people to come on and be a part of In the Backyard with Pastor Perryman, all right? Shout out to Brother Salilo, who's on this morning. Good to see you, my brother. Shout out to Miss Tiffany Barnes. Who's on today? Good to see you. Thank you so much for tuning in. But again, y'all do me a favor. Make sure you share, you like, you tag, you invite. Start a watch party today. Get other people to come on and be a part of In the Backyard with Pastor Perryman. Hey, I'm getting some of this amazing coffee that my wife made today. And then, man, we're going to get into this word, all right? Shout out to Miss Edna Powell, who's on today. Good to see you. Thank you so much for tuning in. And I appreciate you. I'm drinking out of Miss Tiffany Barnes' cup today so she don't feel slighted, so she can know her pastor loves her. <laughs> so, yeah, we're drinking out of your cup today, all right? Well, listen, let's get ready to get to it, and let's get ready to have a great time in the Lord. So, y'all, again, y'all do me a favor. Make sure you share, you like, you tag, you invite. Start a watch party today, all right? Shout out to Miss Jennifer Smith. I got to give you my pound this morning. Good to see you. Shout out to Miss Bam, who's on today. Good to see you. Thank you so much. Uh, for tuning in this morning. I appreciate you. Uh, Miss Willa Robinson is on. Good to see you. Thank you so much for tuning in this morning. Good to see you. Let's get into it. You know, I was watching uh, ESPN Sports a few days ago and um, saw this young man who plays for the university, plays for Mississippi State University. And the young man came out and said that if they do not change the flag, the Confederate flag, He's not going to play anymore for Mississippi State. And he makes this statement. He says, I'm tired. And immediately you could you could get you could see the backlash coming. You could just sense it. You know it's going to happen. He's in the deep south playing for a football team. Uh and and, and that is, you know, if you know anything about football in the South, football is king in the South. I immediately know that he's gonna get some blowback. And all of a sudden, you start to see these tweets come about, and these tweets start to say, well, leave then. We didn't want you no way. Well, leave then. I mean, I'm talking about every little bit of racist statement that can be spoken is said about this kid. Now, I want you to get this. Now, this kid has a high potential. He's a high potential draft pick for the NFL, which means that this kid is no slouch, which means that this kid really can play. And so now because he stands up for his political beliefs and what he feels is right, then the people who once celebrated him now won't tolerate him. It's amazing now that as he's running down the football field, he's scoring touchdowns, he needs this, he needs that. He's doing this for them, he's scoring, he's tackling, he's doing all of these things and people are celebrating him. But as soon as he stands, and says that the Confederate flag is wrong, that I'm not going to play for a team or for, for a university who believes in racism, now all of a sudden he's not tolerated. There are many of you who are watching me today that you may have been celebrated, but not tolerated. And some of you might be saying, what does that mean, Pastor? See, you may have been the one who's been celebrated because you, 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 you bought things for the party because you took care of everybody. You looked out for everybody. You cooked the food. You provided this. You did that. 
But as soon as you begin to speak out and say that I don't like this because this hurts me, I feel this way, or because maybe your children have mistreated you and talked disrespectfully to you, and you reached out to other family members to convey the hurt that you feel, now all of a sudden people are pointing out to you what your flaws are, pointing out to you what your mistakes and your mishaps are, that if you would not have done this down through the years, this would not have happened to you. So watch now, at one moment they celebrated you, but now they refuse to tolerate you. How in the world can you celebrate me and not tolerate me? Watch now. There is one who celebrates you. There is one who tolerates you. Okay? Who is the one? That one is Jesus Christ. That one is God. He celebrates you when you do wrong. I mean, when you do right, he celebrates you. The Bible says that God throws a big party when one person gives their life to Christ. Can you imagine heaven having an amazing party because a person gave their life to Christ? When you do right, the Bible tells us that God takes pleasure in the prosperity of his servant. So he celebrates you. But watch this now. But God also tolerates you when you mess up. And there are many people today who are watching me that you have dropped the ball on numerous occasions. You have done things that you should not have done. You've been places that you should not have been. You've done drugs. You've done all kinds of things, but yet God has tolerated you. And the reason that he tolerated you is because he loved you. He didn't throw you away because you dropped the ball, because you made some mistakes, because you had some hiccups, some mishaps, and some, mis and some, some, some difficulties going on in your life. He did not throw you away. He celebrated you, but he also tolerated you. See, watch this now. To celebrate means to appreciate. It means to reward. To celebrate means to, to give adulations. It means to give accolades. To celebrate means that we throw an amazing party. We celebrate you. But watch this now. But to tolerate means we just put up with you. But may I tell you that God does more than celebrate you, but he tolerates you. And the reason that he tolerates you is because his mindset, his mentality, and his love is not like that of a man. See, watch now. God tolerating you doesn't just mean that he puts up with you, but his love sees you through. I'm talking to somebody today because you have been in relationships with people where they, they celebrate you when you are doing everything, when you are paying the bills, when you're providing the food, when you're taking them where they need to go, when you're doing this for them and you're doing that for them, when you are there for them and they could because they could not be there for themselves, they celebrate you. But as soon as you begin to speak up for yourself or as soon as you make a mistake or you drop the ball, the first thing that they do is point the finger at you. So watch this now. They're telling you that I'm not going to put up with this out of you. And so watch this now. But God now puts up with things with you because he loves you. And that is because he's going to see you through your issues. Have you ever stopped to think why God did not abandon you in your time of need? Why didn't he abandon you in your hour of need? Have you ever stopped to think that you have to ask yourself a question. Why didn't God abandon me when I dropped the ball? When I made some mistakes, when I did some things that was not right? Why did he not abandon me? It is because he loves you too much to abandon you. So guess what he's doing? He's willing to tolerate you. He's willing to tolerate you, but at the same time, help you through what you're going through. For some of us, we have anger issues. For some of us, we got pride issues. For some of us, we got habits that we cannot break. For some of us, we know what to do, but we end up doing wrong. And yet and still, he tolerates us because he loves us. So guess what he's doing? He's walking us through the process. He hasn't abandoned us. Not only does he celebrate us, but he tolerates us. And I don't know about you, but I'm glad that he tolerates me. The Bible says it like this. Paul is talking. The apostle Paul says, when I would do good, evil is present. And then Paul says it like this. He says, when I do good, I find myself doing wrong. He said, that that I do, that, that I should be doing, I don't do. And that that I shouldn't be doing, that I do. So watch what Paul said. He says, even as holy and as sanctified and on fire as I am and writing all of the Bible that I'm doing, all of the praying and all of the laying hands on the sick, taking the gospel to the Gentile nation, I myself find myself in a difficult situation. Sometimes I do what I shouldn't be doing, and sometimes I don't do what I know I should be doing. And yet it's still God tolerated him. Not only did he tolerate him, but he he walked him through the process. May I tell you today that there may be family members today who refuse to tolerate you, who refuse to walk with you through the process, but there is one who will walk with you through the process. The Bible says that there be a part of the body that is weak 
Here's what God says. The Bible says that God spends more abundant honor on that part of the body that is weak so that the devil cannot infiltrate and destroy. So guess what God has said? He said, listen, I'm tolerating you because I love you, but guess what I am going to do? I am going to sure up your situation. I'm going to help you through this crisis. Not only am I going to celebrate you, but I'm going to tolerate you by loving you, by walking you through this thing. I'm going to show you the proper way. I'm going to build you up. I'm going to eradicate you. I'm, I mean, I'm going to erect you. I'm going to build you up as a monument so that other people can look at you and say, she used to be broken down. She used to be torn from the floor. He used to be weak. He used to be bent over and bowed down. But guess what I'm doing now? I'm building this, cer this certain individual up because I'm about to present this person to the world. Don't let people who, who criticize you and ostracize you cause you to not be the monument that God wants you to be. May I tell you today that in order for a monument to be built, it must go through the breaking process. It must go through the cracking process. There must be a hammering on it in order for it to be shaped and made and molded into the image that God wants it to be. May I tell you today that maybe you are that statue that God is ready to put on display. And so what he's been doing is where people have not celebrated you. He says, come on, I'm going to celebrate you, but I'm also going to tolerate you. And in the midst of tolerating you, it's going to be my love that builds you up. Aren't you glad today that he built you up? Aren't you glad today that he tolerated you, that he didn't walk away from you, that he didn't throw you away, that he didn't act like humans, he didn't talk like other people talked about you when other people said you were nothing and nobody and you would never amount to anything? He did not say that about you. There are people who are watching me today. You have felt down through the years that you are the black sheep of your family. May I tell you today that you are not the black sheep. You are just the sheep who don't fit in. I'm talking to somebody today. You're not the black sheep of the family. You're the sheep that just doesn't fit in. And that's on purpose. God designed you and built you and created you so that you don't fit in. It is because you are supposed to fit out. I know I know that's not the proper grammar or the proper vernacular. Minister Campbell, give me this moment for a minute. See, you are not built to fit in. You are built to fit out. To fit out means that others have got to look for you for help. If you ever stop to think, you being the black sheep of the family, you only get celebrated because maybe you're the one that's paying the bills in the family. Maybe you're the one with the car that you got to get this person here and get this person there and do this for this person and do that for that person. But guess what they don't want to do? They don't want to tolerate you. But isn't it strange how they look to you for help? Isn't it strange how they couldn't pay their bills if you weren't there? Isn't it strange that they couldn't get where they needed to go had you not been there for them? Isn't it strange that, that when they got in trouble, they called on you because they knew you were going to be there? You didn't fit in. It was because you fit out. I, I know I know that's not the proper grammar, proper vernacular, but this is who you are. You have been created by God not to fit in, but to fit out. It's important today. So people will celebrate you and sometimes not tolerate you if you're not giving them what they want anymore. They won't tolerate you. If you're not, if you're not bringing entertainment to them, they won't tolerate you. If you won't bring it, you won't bring excitement to them anymore. They won't tolerate you. They refuse to tolerate you because you are not doing what they expect you to do. Let me go a step further into this. Sometimes people can celebrate others and not tolerate you. Okay, what does that mean? Sometimes they can celebrate other people and not tolerate you. Okay, all right, watch now. Uh, I'm going to say some stuff today that's going to sound controversial, but it's not controversial. I'm talking to my members of the church, so bear with me. Walk with me now as I lead people through this thing. When I first became the pastor of, of the church that I pastor now, watch now. It was almost as if I was handed to the people without their knowledge. You understand? It was almost as if I was handed to the people and they were not prepared for me. All right? That wasn't the people's fault. It was just leadership didn't prepare them for the next leader to show up. Watch now. The leader turns to church over to me because God told him that his time was up pastoring the church and he was to turn it over to me because I'm the younger understudy with the fire that God needs for the people in this season. So watch now. He does this. He turns it over to me. And so watch now. Because people were not prepared to receive me, they only tolerated me. Where they celebrated him, they only tolerated me. Watch now. The celebration is understandable for him. I'm talking to somebody today. Please hear me today. The celebration was understandable for him because, watch now, for some people in my church, he was the only pastor they have ever known. 
that they had been with him when they were eight, nine, ten years old. Some of them, when they were 12 years old, they'd been with him 20 and 30 years of their life, so he's the only one that they knew, so they celebrated him. But when I came along, there was a toleration. We may not celebrate him, but we are tolerated. And usually now, when people tolerate you, they can't stand with you when you make mistakes. Talk back to me today. They, they can't stand with you when you make mistakes. So watch now. Two weeks after me becoming a leader, there was people who said, met, met with my wife and I and said, we can't, we can't be a part of the ministry anymore. Uh, we just don't agree with this move. So they left. We had other people met with us and said, well, uh, I just want to be a part of something that's better. I've been here a long time and nothing has been good. I want to I wanna be a part of something better. And I'm saying to the person, give me an opportunity. I got something to bring to the table. God has given me something for the table. And then, no, no, I'm going to go ahead and go. And then there were groups in the church who, who couldn't receive me, who couldn't receive my style because my style was in, in direct contradiction to the leader who was of the, of the church previous. So they couldn't stick with me. So instead of walking with me, instead of growing with me, instead of celebrating me, they only tolerated me. And when I made a mistake, it became big. I'm saying this. It became big. What does it mean it became big? My mistake began, mag be, became magnified because it was a mistake. See, watch now, when you tolerate people, you magnify their mistakes. You magnify their flaws. When they do something that is not correct, when they do something that you don't deem is right, instead of walking with them, instead of encouraging them, instead of praying for them, here's what you end up doing. You end up talking about them and end up pushing them in a corner where they end up fighting back because when people are hurt, they begin to lash out and hurt people. See, because hurting people hurt people. People get to a point that they're not going to take it much longer. They're not going to let you continuously keep putting them down, shutting them down, belittling them, and ostracizing them without them coming out to fight. And so here I am back in the corner. And so now all of a sudden, the hurt and the pain begins to surface and begins to fester. And I end up saying something that no pastor should ever say to his members. If you don't want to be here, you can let the doorknob hit you with a good Lord split you. Those are the worst words that a pastor could ever say to his members. So watch this now. Because I'm tolerated and not celebrated, I couldn't get those words back. Now, even though I stood up and apologized, it still affected people. Watch now. Just because people tolerate you and say things to you disrespectful and say things to you that are dishonorable, don't give you the right to say things disrespectfully to them. So watch now. Some of the mistakes that I made, the previous leader made them. But watch now. But because there is a love there, that person can be celebrated. But if I make the mistakes, I'm only tolerated. Watch now. I was explaining to my wife one day, there's a difference between being loved and being tolerated. See, a per when you love somebody, you can dismiss their flaws. When you love somebody, you can overlook their flaws. When you love somebody, you will cover their flaws. But when you tolerate an individual, you won't cover their flaws. You won't dismiss their flaws. But what you will do is magnify their flaws. So you have to ask yourself a question. Am I just tolerating somebody in my life? Am I sowing a seed that's going to produce a harvest in my life? What does that mean? Am I sowing the seed of toleration because I'm only tolerating this individual? Or am I setting myself up for the same harvest to manifest itself back in my life? See, I'm in a place in my life now where I'm not tolerating people anymore, but I'm loving people and celebrating people because the reality is when I first became the pastor, I'm, I was hard. I was tough. I was saying things and being hard on people, preaching on things across the pulpit, pointing out sin and pointing out flaws. And I was doing it because I had gotten wisdom from someone else who told me that this is what you have to do. You have to establish your dominance in the church so that other people would know that you are the leader. And here's what I didn't do. I took the person's advice, but I did not look at the person's fruit. What does that mean you didn't look at the person's fruit? I did not look at the person and see that it wasn't working for him. So if it's not working for you, why would it work for me? So all of a sudden now, I'm practicing a principle that's not working for this individual, and it causes me every single thing that I'm working hard for. It causes people trust in me. It causes their faith in me. It causes it all. So here I am. I'm not being celebrated, but I'm being, I'm being tolerated. And all of a sudden, I'm in a position that I don't want to be in. And so now, I've made a decision one day, and I'm not pointing out people's flaws anymore. I'm not pointing out people's sins anymore. 
Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to love people unconditionally. In my church, I'm going to encourage them. I'm going to preach the blessing to them. I'm going to preach the kingdom message to them. I'm going to undergird them. When they get in trouble, I'm going to be there for them. I'm going to love on them. I'm not going to point their sins out. I'm not going to ridicule them. I'm not going to diminish them. I'm not going to put them down, but I'm going to put my arms around them. So it was on that Sunday morning that I shifted and changed as a pastor. Watch this now. Sometimes you can shift and change and other people not know it. Let me say it again. Sometimes you can shift and change and other people not know. Why is that? Because people still have the toleration mentality. I'm just tolerating you. They don't even know that you shift. They don't even know that you change. They don't even know that you're not the same person anymore. They are family members today who don't even realize that their sister has shifted. They don't know that the sister changed. Don't know that the brother shifted. Don't know that the brother changed because they're still holding on to what the person used to do, holding on to what the person used to be, and holding on to what the person used to say. They don't even know that they shifted and changed. Sometimes when you shift and change, people cannot comprehend it. They can't understand it because they're not looking for it. They don't see it. Listen to this. The Bible tells us that Moses now comes down off the mountain. He's been in the presence of God for 40 days. Scripture says his visits changed to the point now he's glowing. He's glowing white. And he's got to put this veil over his face now because he understands that people would not be able to handle his change. He, he, got, he got this veil on. He comes down and people see this thing and they get afraid. It's because they couldn't handle his change. May I tell you today, that when you shift, a lot of times people can't handle your shift. When you change, people can't always handle your change. People rather you to stay in the situation that you were in before because they are comfortable with that. They're they comfortable with that. They're not comfortable with the new you. Even though the new you is a better you, they're not comfortable with that. How do you know this? The Bible says now that here Jesus now has gone to the gatherings and there's a man now who, who, who's been living amongst the tombs. He's possessed with a legion of demons. Bible says Jesus shows up and the man comes running to Jesus. And the Bible says he, he's on his face before Jesus. And the Bible tells us that, watch now, that Jesus now asked the man, what's your name? And the legions begin to speak and said, we are legions for we are many. Now watch now. They asked they ask Jesus, could they be, I know you're going to cast us out. You're, not, you're here before your time. You're ready to cast us out. Don't do this to us. Do we have permission to go into the swine? And Jesus cast them out, and, the, and these demons ran into the swine, ran into the pigs, and the pigs ran down into this lake and drowned and killed themselves. Watch now. The people who were hurting the pigs got upset because the pigs died and was not happy because the man got free. Do you not realize that the, the Bible said this man lived in the tombs and this man, this man was demonically oppressed, that they, they couldn't bind this man with chains or feathers, that this man was, was so demonically oppressed and so, so demonically depressed and, and so, so demonically possessed to the point that he would break the chains and the feathers and anybody who come by, he would terrorize them. You would have thought that the people would have been happy that the man got free. And they were not. They were, ha they were unhappy because they lost their spine. See, people can be comfortable with you being in your same situation because that's what they are familiar with. That's what they are comfortable with. But when God does something drastic in your life, you have to understand that everybody may not be able to celebrate you. Somebody only, only wants to tolerate you. I'm talking to somebody today. I'll never forget. I was being told by the leader that you're going to be the pastor. Don't say anything to the people. I'm going to talk to the people. I'm going to be the pastor. That you're going to be the pastor, but don't say anything to the people. Keep this thing in house. And I said, yes, sir. I'll do what you say. All of a sudden, there was a lady who was a member, who used to be a member of our church. She uh, comes, to our, comes to the church one night, and, and she's preaching her trial sermon. They're going to let her preach her trial sermon at the church. I, I'll give the name just for clarity for the members of my church who will understand that this person, who this person is. This is not a testimony. This is a real testimony. It's Miss Jackie Hankins' auntie, Miss Rosler. She's getting ready to preach her trial sermon, and we are all sitting there. And she's standing up and she's preaching. In the middle of her sermon, she turns to me and she says to me, Pastor Perryman, when you become pastor of this church, people are not going to celebrate you, but they're going to tolerate you. 
Don't worry about that. Keep preaching because God has put you in this place. He assigned you to this place. And don't you fall victim for it. And he says, to, and she says to me, and God is going to reveal to, the, to you who the people are. And I'm sitting up in there. I'm in amazement now. How in the world does she know that? Who told her? I didn't say anything to her. Didn't really know this person. Don't have no relationship with this person. How in the world does she know this? But she says this in a night service where she's preaching her trial sermon. And I'm baffled and I'm bewildered. And I'm like, oh my God, somebody done told something. Somebody done said something. But every word that she said that night came true. Every word she said that night came true. Let me say it again. Every word that she said that night came true. And in a sense, God did uncover and God did reveal. But watch this now. When you're in a relationship with a person, you have to do more than tolerate them. You have to be willing to celebrate them. To celebrate them means that I don't always celebrate you when you do good, but I celebrate you when you do bad. What does that mean, celebrating? Pastor, that's, that don't even make sense. It's an oxymoron. How in the world am I going to celebrate you when you do bad? That means you're going to continue to keep walking with me. You're not going to abandon me because I've done wrong. You're not going to abandon me because I messed up. You're not going to abandon me because I said something that I should not have said. You're not going to abandon me because I did something that may not be pleasing in your sight. See, watch now. That's still celebrating the individual because you're telling the individual that in spite of it all, I'm still with you. In spite of it all, I'm still there for you. In spite of it all, I'm still for you. I may not like what you did, may not like what you said, may not appreciate how you did it, but guess what I am doing? I'm still walking with you. I'm still talking with you. Do you not realize that the Bible said that Jesus walks with us? He talks with us? That he's there with us, that he didn't abandon us. The scripture tells us that he is long suffering. We don't know how long suffering he is, but the Bible says he's long suffering. The scripture tells us that he's patient, that he's kind, that he's caring. He's all of that. And I don't know about you, but I am so glad that he's long suffering. I'm so glad that, that his long suffering didn't run out on me when I was doing dirt, when I was doing stuff that I didn't have no business doing, when I was messing over women's life, when I was running in and out of their life, he did not abandon me. He still walked with me. He still reminded me when I didn't do right. He still reminded me that he loved me and that he cared for me. He still told me that he can bring me out of this if I just trust him. He was still there. If you look down through the, through the, through, through, if you look down through the years of your life, you're going to find out that God didn't abandon you, that he was there with you. When you were making mistakes, when you were doing wrong things, he was still there for you. And he did not beat you. He did not belittle you. But what he did do is show you that he still loved you. See, sometimes people will celebrate you, but they won't tolerate you. But God now, not only does he celebrate you, but he'll tolerate you. He'll tolerate you, and I'm glad that he tolerated me. When I was out in Long Beach, and I got my big old blue bomber jacket on, and I got a belt tied around my waist, I got a 9 millimeter Astra A330 in my back with, with 15 in the clip and one in the hole. And I got it in my back, and I got I got this 32 and 357 on my side. I'm, I'm loaded for bed. I got firepower big time, and I'm on these street corners in Long Beach, and I'm selling drugs like never before. I'm out there hustling. I'm doing my thing. You understand? And I got to be strapped because I'm hustling all night long. I'm getting this money all night long. I can't take no chances. I may have to draw down, and I may have to shoot somebody. And there was times... Well, I pulled, well, I drew down and pulled the trigger and the gun didn't fire. See, can't nobody tell me that God is not real. Can't nobody tell me that God can't come to your rescue. Can't nobody tell me that God cannot protect you and that God cannot cover you. Can't nobody tell me that. When I was out there, tore up from the floor, he was there for me. He was there for me. Who would have ever thought that he would have saved an individual like me, a gun-toting dude, a dude who was running through people's lives, a dude who was quick to do this if he had to and quick to do this if he had to? He, he, you're talking to somebody who's been radically saved for real. I know that there is a God and that not only did he celebrate me, but he tolerated me. Others may not cel may celebrate you, but they may not tolerate you. But I came to tell you today that there is one who celebrates you and tolerates you. You may have been the person who never knew who your father was. And you've been wondering all your life, where my daddy is, where my daddy at? I don't know who my daddy is. Never met my daddy. I wish my daddy was in my life. And all of this type of stuff. And you've been living a life of frustration. And you've been saying things like, if my daddy was in my life, I'd be able, I would have been able to do this. I would have been better as a man. I'd have been better as a woman. May I tell you today that there's one who's been with you all the time. His name is God. He's been a father to the fatherless. He's been a friend to the friendless. 
He's been there for those who did not know who their daddy was. For those of you who graduated and daddy was never there. For those of you who walked down the aisle and your daddy was never there. For those of you who had major accomplishments and you wanted to celebrate with your daddy and your daddy was not there. May I tell you today that God has somebody there to celebrate you. It may not have been the individual that you wanted, but it was the individual that you needed. I'm talking to somebody today because you've overlooked all of the celebration that God has given you. <laughs> you've overlooked it when you graduated. You Maybe daddy wasn't there, but God had mama up there shouting and jumping and jerking and jigging. Maybe had a friend clapping for you, or a sister or some other family member, or maybe somebody else that was close to you, to you jumping and shouting and jerking for you and screaming your name out and celebrating you and giving you a gift. See, God has been there all the time. He celebrated you when you needed to be celebrated, and he tolerated you when you needed to be tolerated. When you was in your dumb day, he was still there for you. When you made dumb decisions, he was still there for you. When you did some things that were not right, when you were strung out on drugs, when you were being promiscuous, when you were, when you were running through women and you were running through men, when you, were, when you were doing all of these things, when you were lying and cheating and stealing, when you were cheating on your income tax and doing some stuff that you should not have done, he was still there for you. He did not give up on you. It's because he tolerated you. Tolerated you. But his toleration doesn't mean he put up with you. It means he loved you through the process. He loved you through your process. Because every one of us goes through our dumb day. Let me say it again. Every one of us goes through our dumb day. How do you know, Pastor, every one of us go through our dumb day? Because you make statements like this. If I would have knew then what I know now, I would not have made those decisions. That's a sign that you know that you was in your dumb day. I'm talking to somebody today. You was in your dumb day and he still loved you. Not only did he celebrate you, but he tolerated you with his love. He walked you through the process. He walked you right through the process. He, he drove you right through the process. Every step of the way, he was there for you. When you chose the wrong man, he was there for you. He didn't abandon you because you chose the wrong man. When you chose the wrong woman, he was still there for you. He walked through the process for you. When you were in and out of jail, he walked through the process for you. When you were the man who was doing the cheating, he was walking through the process with you. When you were the woman who was being cheated on, he walked you through the process. He was there for you. It's not because he just sees the God who celebrates, but he's also the God who tolerates you with his love. I don't know about you, but I am grateful today that not only does he tolerate, not only does he celebrate me, but he tolerates me. He tolerates me when I want to throw in the towel again on him. He still tolerates me. He walks me through the process. <laughs> when I feel like I can't make it and I don't know what else to do, he tolerates me by walking through me through the process. When I don't know how I'm going to come out of this situation or come out of this circumstance, he walks me through the process. He walks me through. He tolerates me by walking me through the process. See, everybody, sometimes people will celebrate you, but they won't tolerate you. They celebrate you when you got stuff, but won't tolerate you when you don't have nothing. Sometimes they celebrate you when you're paying all of the bills, but won't tolerate you when you start to speak up about how you feel. Sometimes people celebrate you when you are the one who's doing everything for everybody, but then they won't tolerate you when you say, I'm getting tired of this. Listen to this. You got to get like Erica Badu. I'm getting tired of you. You better get Jim, James, Paul, and Tyrone. You, you better, you, I think you better call them and go on out of my life. Some of you got to get this mentality. For the people who refuse to tolerate you, you got to let them walk out of your life. You got to let them go. You got to have this Erica Badu mentality. I'm going to let you go and call James, call Jim, call Paul, call Tyrone and get your stuff and go on out of my life today. It's a decision that you have to make that I'm, I'm not going to let. I'm not going to let anybody else continue to keep walking over me, keep talking down on me, keep belittling me, keep putting me down. You only celebrate me when I can do something for you, but you can't celebrate me when I don't have nothing. When I was there for you, you can't be there for me. You celebrated me when I had something, but you can't celebrate me when I don't. No, baby, you're not the one that I need. And for some of you, it may be friends and family members that you got to let walk out of your life. There's nothing wrong with you walking this journey without friends and without family members because as you start to walk down this journey, here's what God will do. He'll walk this journey with you. When you get tired, he'll pick you up and carry you along the way. 
If you need friends while you're on this journey, he'll cause friends to show up. If you need family members to walk with you down this journey, he'll add the family members you need in order to walk this journey with you. May I tell you today that not only will God celebrate you, but he'll tolerate you with his love. Ha! I'm talking to somebody today. That's my time. I pray your life was blessed and that you were encouraged today. <laughs> oh, my God. Y'all share, like, tag, invite, start a watch party. Get other people to come on and be a part today. Listen, I got to give some people some shout outs today. Hey, shout out to Miss Ann who's on today. Miss Tracy Anderson is rocking with us today. Good to see you, sweetheart. Thank you so much for being on this morning. Uh, I think I said shout out to Miss Irene Holmes today. Miss Shirley Powell, Miss Edna Powell is on today. Good to see you guys. My auntie Dorothy Perryman is on today. Good to see you. Miss Philander Addison Ross is rocking with us this morning too. She's on. Good to see you today. Thank you so much for tuning in this morning. I appreciate y'all so very much for walking with me today. And thank y'all for not only celebrating me, but tolerating me too. <laughs> shout out to Miss Diane King. You know, Miss Diane King, she, she got more love. Then she got so much love that she can she can loan some love out to you. Matter of fact, she can give you some love out of her love bank account and not even miss the love she gave. That's how much love she got to give. So y'all give Miss y'all give Miss Diane King a big shout out today. I'm telling you, if you spend a few minutes in Miss Diane King's presence, your whole life is gonna shift. And if you are sick in your body today, and you just need some encouragement, get in contact with Miss Diane King. I promise you, she will share with you how she overcame cancer, how cancer tried to take her out, and she overcame it. She beat cancer, and she'll testify to you. I promise you, you'll get encouraged. It's just a good five minutes in her presence. I'm telling you, your whole life will shift and change because you've been five minutes in her presence, and she's going to talk to you about Jesus, and she's going to let you know how good Jesus is, how good he's been to her down through the years. I promise you, you'll be encouraged when you talk to Miss Diane King. <laughs> Sometimes I have to go to Miss Diane King when I say some stuff crazy so I can get it, so I can get it together. Because Miss Diane King said, I got to pray for that boy. I got to pray for that boy. <laughs> let me give somebody their day today. Got to give somebody their day today. Today is Miss Willa Robinson's day. It's Miss Willa Robinson's day today. Today is Miss Tracy Anderson's day. It's Miss Tracy Anderson's day. Uh, shout out to Miss Tracy Anderson, who's on today. Uh, shout out to Miss Bambi. It's Miss Bambi's day today. Shout out to Miss Bambi. And today is Miss Kelly Johnson's day. Whatever these people want, they get. Whatever these ladies want, they get. Whatever they need, get supplied. Whatever they need, they get. Whatever they want, it gets supplied. It's their day today. Show them some love and some appreciation today. Please do that. But listen, if you want to talk to Miss Diane King, you have to go through Miss Jennifer Smith. Miss Jennifer Smith is Miss Diane King's manager, and, and she may be charging. I don't know, or setting up appointments or something. But anyway, <laughs> but let's show these ladies some love today, all right? It's their day today, all right? We appreciate every one of you uh, today for tuning in. Thank you all for letting me give you my Easter speech. I appreciate you. I do. So listen, let me get ready to get out this thing today. Uh, I want to pray for you this morning. I want to pray for those of you who feel like you're just being tolerated and nobody is celebrating you. I really want to pray for you because I know you got hurt in your heart. And for some of you, you feel this way toward family members that maybe it's your sisters who are just tolerating you and pointing out your flaws. Maybe it's brothers who are just tolerating you and pointing out your flaws. That's not what you want. You want, you really are looking for love from your family members and it's not happening and it's hurting you. You haven't been able to express it the way you want to express it. But the hurt and the pain is there. I'm praying for you. Oh, uh, today is, is Miss Kiana Parker's birthday. It's Miss Minister Kim's daughter's birthday today. So big shout out to Kiana Parker. It is her birthday today. So shout out to Kiana. Happy birthday to you, Kiana. So uh, Minister Kim, please let your daughter Kiana know that it is her birthday today. We celebrate her this morning, all right? So let me pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for every person who's watching me today. I ask in Jesus' name, God, that you will pour your blessing and your favor out on your people this morning. For those people today, God, who feel like they're just being tolerated, that they're not being heard, that they're, they're not being accepted, but they're being belittled and pushed back because maybe of their past or maybe things that they've done that may not have been good. Lord, I ask in Jesus' name that you would comfort these people, that you would give them peace today, that you would give them hope and you would give them help today. And Lord, I thank you. You said in your word, God, that you are a friend who sticks closer than a brother. You said that you are father to the fatherless. 
And so, Lord, we thank you for that, that in every time we needed you, God, you have been there to celebrate us. And God, I thank you for it. You've tolerated us with your love when we have made mistakes, we've dropped the ball and done things that are not right in your sight. And so, God, I thank you for it today in Jesus' name. Now, Father, I lift up the country of Belize. I lift up my town, Itabina, Mississippi, and I pray for the Delta as a whole. And I ask in Jesus' name, God, that you will bless these places today. Pour your favor out on these places. Enlarge their territories. Bless the works of the hands of the people who are there, oh God. Heal the sick in these places, God. Deliver and set free today. And God, I thank you right now that even as I'm praying, you are doing miracles in every house in Itabini. You're doing miracles in every house in the Delta. You're doing miracles in every house in Belize. And God, I thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. All right, Miss Abigail Yates is on. I got to show Miss Abigail Yates some love. You know, hey, Miss Abigail Yates is has been with us for a minute. Thank you thank you to Miss Karen Yates uh, for getting her on the broadcast with us. We appreciate you uh, for tuning in today. Love you. She is a sister of Miss Melvin Yates Pitts and Miss Marucka Yates. So, hey, I love all three of those people. They're the reason that, that I'm Belizean. Not only with my wife, but they're the reason I'm Belizean now. I'm kind of a dual citizen, so to speak. <laughs> But anyway, I love y'all. But listen, get your seat in the ground. Go to our website at Kingdom Life Faith Center. Get your seat in the ground. Oh, Miss Sheila T. Roby is on today. Shout out to Miss Sheila Roby who's on today. I cannot omit her. All right, so shout out to her. All right, but get your seat in the ground. Go to our website, kingdomlifefaithcenter.org. Click on the online giving button there and get your seed in the ground, all right? Get it in the ground. Hey, you can give your tithe, your offerings. If you want to sow directly to me or to my wife, you can do it through the cash app. The cash app is the dollar sign, Pastor Perryman. And the cash out for my wife is the dollar sign, Pastor Sophia. Get it in the ground today, all right? Hey, shout out to Mr. Cassandra James Moore. Shout out to Miss Cassandra James Moore today. I'm praying for Miss Cassandra so she won't be driving Miss Irene Holmes all fast and stuff. <laughs> so I love y'all. I appreciate y'all. And Miss Irene, he, you pray for her too so she'll be driving fast. <laughs> all right? I love y'all. I'll see y'all tomorrow. Y'all be blessed in Jesus' name, all right? Make sure you start a watch party. Let other people be blessed by the message that you are receiving today, all right? I love y'all. We'll see y'all tomorrow. Be blessed in Jesus' name.